<laughs> which is really cool. Are we good? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so we're in the BISC 101 lab right now at SFU. Um, I guess a few days before the midterm, and uh, Megan did this really cool thing in class where she took um, speaker cables and showed the splitting of the DNA and how DNA replication works. I'm going to do it again with a, some, since we have the models here right now for uh, transcription and translation, I thought I might as well use what you now are now familiar with to show you replication as well. All right, so start with the DNA here. I'm actually going to move. Okay, so I'm going to do DNA replication as it actually looks inside of a cell. So rather than just splitting one side, I'm going to have a replication bubble. Right? So along a very long chromosome, in many, many origins of replication, you're going to split the two strands apart. Okay? So the way it's split apart is by certain enzymes. So I, basically, we have a cell membrane on the outside, nuclear envelope, everything's happening inside the nucleus where the DNA is. And I've shown kind of the little buffet of enzymes that you have involved. Okay? So what is it that actually starts splitting apart the DNA? Helicase. Helicase. Okay. So we need two helicases, one going left, one going right, that's going to split apart these two single strands of DNA from the, the parent DNA, right? And then after we split it, we're going to add two new single strands, the, the daughter strands, in order to make eventually two pieces of DNA that are double-stranded. Okay. Now one thing I want you to notice is, originally, this DNA was kind of a nice, loose, kind of double helix, right? As the helicase splits them apart and starts pulling these strands apart, notice what happens to that twist. It gets kind of tighter and tighter, right? To the point where it's gonna have trouble opening up anymore, all right? So that's gonna be a problem. So what solves that problem of the overwinding of the DNA as helicase starts splitting it apart? So there's another enzyme involved. Yeah, topoisomerase, okay? So this enzyme is found over here where the kind of over twisting is happening. And what it actually does is, because this is actually a really long piece and it's getting more and more twisted, it actually just cuts one of these ends so that the other end can spin around and unwind itself. Okay, so it kind of cuts it here, lets it unwind a little bit so it's loose again, and we can keep kind of letting helicase do its job from there. Does that make sense? Okay. The topo I summarize does. So as this splits apart and we kind of expose both template strands, we're going to be trying to build new strands of DNA on both sides, okay? So I'm going to focus on what's happening as we go left first, okay? So as we go left and we unwind this more and more, all right, um, we're going to have two strands being built, a leading strand and a lagging strand. Taking a close look, can you guys tell me which one is the leading, is, which new strand is going to be the leading strand? Is it the one being built off of template one or the one being built off of template two? as we go left. Okay, so talk about it to the people next door. One or two, and decide why. Okay, template one, template two, which one is gonna hold the leading strand? Okay, so who says one? Who says two? Okay, show your fingers, one or two. Hands up. Okay, see a bunch of ones, and some twos as well. All right, I would say that the ones have it. Okay, so let's look at why. This strand here has a five prime end over here, right? So I'll, I'll label it bigger. So five prime end is right there, and this one has a three prime end, okay? When I build the new strand, right, um, which direction is gonna be built? So from five towards the three, right? So if we're gonna build five to three as this splits up, right? It's gonna be stuck to a strand that is five to three in the opposite direction. Does that make sense? Okay. So we know that basically, as we go in this direction, this is gonna be holding our leading strand, okay? But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, right, what do we need first before we can start building the new DNA strand? Yeah, we need a primer, a primer which is put in by primase. So primase starts kind of near the origin of replication, and it lays down a little bit of RNA, okay? Because just like RNA polymerase, this is, primase is a type of RNA polymerase. It can add nucleotides wherever. It doesn't have to have a start point already established, right? So it puts down a little bit of RNA because DNA polymerase is not quite so smart. It needs something already there to add to, okay? So once the primer, which is a bit, little bit of RNA uh, nucleotides are down, then DNA polymerase can come along and start adding DNA. And since we're going right now from five prime towards three prime, 
right? There's no problem. So you just kind of keep going as helicase unzips it more and more, just makes more and more DNA this way, five prime to three prime, until we get to the very end. Does that make sense? Okay. Now our other template strand is going to be a bit more problematic in that we can't build from three towards five, right? We have to go the other way around. So our primase is going to have to wait until this unzips enough that it has some space to add a little bit of RNA primer there. And then DNA polymerase can come along and build the DNA backwards relative to how this is opening up. Okay, so that's one Okazagi fragment. And then once helicase moves further, unzips it even more, then there's enough room for primaries to come in, add another primer, and then DNA comes uh, through this way as well. Okay, does that kind of make sense? So that's what a leading and lagging strand looks like. Um, if we were to finish off on this side, right, what else needs to happen before we're done making these daughter strands? Right, because this doesn't, this doesn't look like the proper daughter strand of the daughter DNA molecule. Um, we need DNA polymerase, which one? Uh, one. One. Okay, so we were using DNA polymerase three to make these long strands here, right? But we need a different one for something else. So what do we use this for? Yeah, because we don't want our new DNA molecule to have the, all these random RNA pieces left in there, so we need to replace them. So RNA polymerase, uh, DNA polymerase one comes along and basically knocks out the piece that are primer. Okay, and then replaces it with DNA instead. Okay. Um, oh, actually, it's right here. But then there's still a little gap here. Same with over here. We will knock out our primer and replace it with DNA, but there's still a little gap there. Okay. So we're done getting rid of the RNA as best we can, but we still have some gaps between the segments, some, some uh, phosphodiester bonds that aren't made. So how do we fix that? Yeah. So everybody, everybody's favorite enzyme, ligase, comes along, joins that together, joins that together. Now we have one continuous piece here, and the Okazagi fragments are all DNA and all joined together. Make sense? Now, remember that this was a replication bubble where we have one fork going this way, one fork going that way. All right, so let's take a quick look at the other side. So again, helicase unwinds the DNA, which causes problems here, but topoisomerase will help to unwind it, help it loosen up, and it'll keep opening up. Right. For this one here, which one ends up being the which template strand holds the leading strand? Template one, template two. Okay. Template two, very good. Right. So this one is going five to three this way, which is great because that means that we can build from five to three this way. Okay. So five prime here. Whereas this one here, this is the three prime end, so we're gonna have to do the whole Okazagi fragment thing. All right, so something to notice though is that when you open up the bubble like this, it's not as though one whole strand is always leading, leading, leading all the way through, right? This side, it's leading, this side, it's lagging. Okay, bottom half as well. This one just nice and easy, nice and smooth, but for the other fork, you kind of have to do it piece by piece. Okay, so that's why the picture that Megan Jew in class looked the way it did. You have dash, 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 long line. Dash, 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 long line. That make sense? So when this is done, what will actually look like? Because I'm just giving me some more DNA from over there. Right? So what I'm drawing here, actually, these blue lines, I use blue lines because that's the color of yarn we were using for the DNA. When we're done, what we should have are complete pieces of DNA, right? Having, uh, having replaced the RNA with DNA polymerase one having glued together all the segments with ligase, right? We now have complete new daughter strand with the parent strand. And as it was being made, it was being coiled back up, right? The same goes for this one up here as well. And that's how we ended up with two DNA strands, each one having one kind of parent strand and one daughter strand that were made new. Okay, any questions about that? All right, great, thanks. Thanks, Mike. So I'll post